Hey guys, it's me Merlin and welcome to the OEM Corner. Today we'll be reviewing the AJS K620T, a 60% with Bluetooth, RGB, and a rotary encoder. Stay tuned till after the break to see all my thoughts and opinions. Welcome back. Before we start this review, full disclosure, Epo Maker sent this as a review unit, but I'll try my best to give you all my honest thoughts and opinions. Let's get this started. I'll start this review off by saying this is a fairly well-made board. It's got very little chassis flex and nothing seems loose or ill-fitting. I do have to mention two things that I dislike. First off, the feet. These just look terrible and are not conducive to the design aesthetic. I wish they would have been designed to be removable or at the very least adjustable. Second is the serialization. While I appreciate having my boards have serial numbers because you know it gives that unique feel, putting it on by way of sticker is just such a cop out. I would have preferred if they didn't even bother doing this at all. For this review unit, I requested the AJAS pinks for switches as I'm a linear user these days. Specs say they are basically the same as Cherry MX Red, but they're cheaper. So expect roughly the same levels of scratch. Unfortunately, this is a soldered board, so if you want to change these out, you'll have to do lots of desoldering. The provided stabs are plate mounted. And while there is some factory supplied lube, there is still so much scratch and so much rattle. But honestly, most OEM boards will have this exact same issue. Good thing it's relatively fixable. Another thing that I've noticed is specific to my enter key. Of course, I can't get it to reproduce when I'm filming, but every now and then when I press the enter key, it stays down and takes a few seconds to return. Let's talk about the main reason that drew me to this board, that rotary knob. Rotary knobs are still a novelty when it comes to custom mechanical keyboards with only a small handful providing support for them. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see an OEM board with this. On the K620T, this knob controls volume up and down, and by clicking it, you have mute functionality. The knob does revolve forever, so there's no real set point for min or max volume. When the product is in Bluetooth mode and there is no operation for 10 minutes, the keyboard backlight is automatically turned off. And if there is no operation for 30 minutes, the keyboard enters a deep rest. Clicking any key immediately turns it on and connects it to the computer. However, with the knob, this doesn't occur. the keycaps on the K620T are actually fairly good. These are double shot cherry profile keycaps. Typically on a board of this caliber you'll find OEM profile keycaps of questionable quality. In my opinion, cherry profile provides a much better typing experience than OEM. These days, even high-end keycaps exhibit warpage. So I'm fairly impressed that warpage on these is very minimal and at the very least consistent with warpage seen on newer EPBT or GeekArk sets. However, legends are also consistent with other low quality key sets. That space between F and T and shift is perhaps the largest I've seen on any key set. You'll find similar issues on other keys. The board also came with accent keys to add more color. Unfortunately, these do not seem to be made to the same standard as the regular key set and exhibit some pretty severe warpage. Skip these unless you absolutely need colors. This keyboard uses Bluetooth 3.0. The board features a 4400 milliamp hour battery with an advertised spec of 50 hours when the backlight is turned on and 880 hours without the backlight. Charging duration is spec'd at 5 hours and the standby time is about 88,000 hours. It allows you to connect three devices via the Q, W, and E keys. I've actually been extensively using this connected to my MacBook Pro for the last three weeks, working your typical 8 to 10 hour day and so far, from a full charge, I have yet to see the low battery indicator light up. Of course, I've kept the RGBs turned off, but I imagine turning the RGBs on will decrease the life significantly. In terms of latency, I did not really notice much difference between wired mode and Bluetooth mode while doing my day-to-day -day work. Of course, I'm just really typing, I'm not really gaming here, so if you're into competitive esports, you may feel a difference. 
Of course, if you don't want to use Bluetooth, feel free to plug your board in and toggle the switch over to wired mode. One of the board's major features is a pocket to put a tablet or phone of your choice in, so you could effectively have some sort of laptop setup with your favorite tablet. This is honestly more of a gimmick than something practically usable. Due to recent world events, I've been working from home, and as a result, have been made very aware of ergonomics and prolonged typing sessions. The angle you are forced to put your tablet on makes it difficult to get a good viewing angle in. This forces you to raise the board higher, resulting in less than ideal wrist placement. Of course, I don't really have a full-size tablet here to test it with, but with what I have right here, it's definitely an issue. One of the largest issues with 60% is, where are the arrow keys? Where are my function keys? People typically get around this by putting arrows and function keys on layers. As a long time user of programmable keyboards, I have become quite accustomed to having keys mapped exactly where I want them to be. Though to be honest, I was a little concerned if this was even gonna be useful. The FN key is located all the way to the bottom right here, and you can actually hold it down and these next set of keys here become your arrows. Of course, this will give you some pinky fatigue, so I was glad to know that you could actually toggle the arrow keys on and off. By holding the FN key and tapping the right shift key, you will then convert these to arrows. You can see the list of other commands that they have through their manual here. Let's really briefly look at some of the RGB modes. Overall, I'm very happy with how this board turned out. It's been a long time since I last reviewed an OEM product. I think the last one I did was a Drevo, I believe. Yeah, I think so, a Drevo. So I've actually been really surprised at how far the OEM products have come. I'll most likely keep using this to type on my MacBook. I'm really enjoying the Bluetooth functionality. However, I do need to make a few adjustments, starting with lubing those stabilizers. The scratchy switches I can tolerate, so I'm not too excited about desoldering and lubing some pretty basic switches. If I ever do go that route, I'll probably just replace them all together. For a board around 50 bucks with so many bells and whistles, this is an absolute steal. I highly recommend this board. All right guys, thanks again for watching to the end of this video. Hope you found this very insightful and would help you determine if whether or not this board is right for you. I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye now.